Let's start out with uh, Chris. Chris Lupine tonight is going to talk to us about dado joints. Uh, and uh, he's got some pictures on the board and whatnot, so we're going to cover that. And then Don's going to do his thing on cheese board. So, Chris, you're on. Awesome. All right, we'll pass this one around. So a dado joint is another way of joining two pieces of wood, typically used in shelving. The concept is one board mates with another board. You put a groove in the board that you're supposed to mate to, and it needs to be square down so you have a nice gluing surface. So rather than a lap joint or a butt joint, we're going to have one surface that you glue. In this case, you get glue on all three surfaces. Um, I'm sure there are rules about how deep you want to go. It all depends on taste and what you're trying to achieve. But the concept is a dado is a groove that's set in the wood that you're mating to. You can accomplish the groove with a router bit. A router bit's half inch, three quarter inch. Plywood comes in non-standard half inch, three quarter inch. So um, it's, chi it's a doable, it's achievable. You use jigs um, and you can, uh, with the proper jig setup, you can actually make a nice dado groove for the plow to, uh, for the piece to go into that matches the thickness of your wood. The piece that's going around, you'll find one piece is very secure and very square. The other piece is a little wobbly. And that's because I made it deliberately a couple of thou wider than a perfect match or as close to perfect as you can get. So it, uh, they're just telling me I won something. So... Uh, you can do it with a router, no issues, no problem, a lot of setup, but it, it takes a skill and it's achievable. Uh, the other way to do it is with a dado, a specific dado blade for the circular saw or regular arm saw, or not circular saw, but table saw or regular arm saw. Um, there's two blades you can use. One is the notorious wobble blade, where you, it's a single blade, and by moving the pieces around, you can make it wobble on the regular arm saw. So it spins back and forth and cuts the, th the thickness out. The problem with that is because it wobbles, you have a nice round bottom. So the glue will not, you, you won't get a perfect match. You don't get that square tight corner. So if it's a visible dado joint where you're putting it on a bookend with nice maple, you will see the gap because this thing will not do it. It will cut the groove but you'll end up with a bottom that's slightly sloped and your eye will pick it up. So the other way of doing it is with a stacked dado blade set. Uh, this is from Freud. Uh, it comes with um, two outer blades that set your dimension and then a number of individual chippers of varying thicknesses that you can add in between. And then it comes with the all-important shims that are vital to this. So on that piece that's going around, I set my dado blade up for what it says is three-quarter inches, and I plowed through and said, there you go, it's going to fit. No, too tight. So the groove wasn't big enough for, I must have had Canadian three-quarter inch plywood rather than U.S. three-quarter inch plywood. Um, so the beauty of this system is it's clean, it doesn't wobble, gives you a nice straight edge. It gives you a nice flat bottom. And it is adjustable by a thou at a time if you really want to get close um, to, to make it fit perfectly. So it involves a little bit of setup. Run it through. It doesn't quite fit properly. You take the outside blade off, put a thou shim in, put the outside blade back on, tighten it all back down again, try another pass with a test strip until you get it just the way you want it. If it's rock solid tight where you have to push it in, then that's probably not good uh, because you'll squeeze all of the glue out of it. You need a little bit. So it's got to be tight and it has to hold the form, but it can't be that you have to take a hammer and mallet and slam it into the joint. So you have to be able to push it in. So if you pull those apart, you'll find that one pulls apart very easily and it's sloppy. The other one, when you pull it apart, it has some pressure to it but you can push it back together with just your hand and I find that works very well uh, for the glue surface to get enough glue on the edges to make a, a good strong joint and then you can fasten as well you can put screws or nails up through the mating piece or 
sometimes on the side you have a pin nailer and you can come through the side and you can you can secure it there as, as if you don't want to depend just on glue and that's essentially the dado joint any questions yeah You have to get the, ch the teeth facing the right way so it cuts. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. You're all right. A little, yeah, a little bit of finger pressure. I start out with mine. I, it's a, it, it will. It's a hex pattern, right? You've got your circle, your main jig, and then your your first one you just put up. In this position, the next one I'll always put in opposite. Right, and then the third one. We'll do this. The fourth one will do this, and then there's in mine. There's a fifth blade to do, it'll do almost an inch uh, wide. So there is a, thir a fifth blade, but by that time you can go back to and overlay this pretty much because you're far enough away, the blade won't interfere. So the sets are designed to do that. And then you put your top blade in. But I, I, I position it on it, so I'll put the first blade on, the inside blade, and then I'll, I'll stack them the way I want them. And you just finger press them and then you, you spin the nut and then it's fine. And they typically won't move. If you've, if you've got them balanced like this, it, it shouldn't give you too much grief. I think if you stack them all one right behind the other, it might be a little bit wobbly. Yeah? Last year I bought one that uh, the 8-inch, and uh, I got it on Amazon by three years. Uh, I got the 8-inch. Yeah. Yeah. Long arrow to in order to fit and get the compression washer on the outside and the nut. Yeah. 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 The inside spacer. Yeah. Yeah. Almost an inch. Yeah. No. No. It, 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 yeah. It becomes you taking a risk with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, because typically you're not going that deep into your wood. You're, you're not trying to make a big groove. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Not. To, not. To, yeah. To allow for the thread on the end, I I wouldn't recommend that. Just normal snug on it, but that's why I'd want to keep the inside um, piece because you need the you need the width, you need that two inches to grab that plate, right? Otherwise, you're just depending on a small eighth inch round to hold that plate on. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, any other questions? <laughs> so it's a, uh, I highly recommend it. This is, this is a, um, um, a fantastic challenge to, to use if you want to make a minor adjustment on it because you're in, you're hot, you're low, you're, you're too wide, you're too narrow, and it's a pain in the ass, and it really doesn't produce a good job. It is cheaper. Um, you can get it cheaper, but it's not worth the money that you pay for it. You're better off with a stacked dado head because you need that square joint because the moment you put it and face forward it to you, you're going to hate it. Yeah. 
This one can uh, radial arm saw. You can also do it in a table. Oh, yeah. It'll fit the same arbor. No? Yeah. Well, it's a little scary, but the, the, uh, the stack data was just as, you know, it makes a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah, because it's moving a lot of air. All right, thanks, guys.